Hello folks and welcome back to another Wise Game video. Today we're playing this game called Dragon Fantasy The Volumes of Wisteria. They also call it Dragon Fantasy Book 1 also. This is available on Steam. I paid $9.99 for it about a week ago from the date that I published this video. It's a Japanese RPG, uh, RPG maker type game, single player turn based, which is a lot of the games that I've, that I've been playing if you've been watching my channel and I still can't get sick of all these old school Japanese RPG games I still love them so if we press start here we're gonna also see why it's called book one book one it's because it's actually if we go to new game it's actually broken down in four different chapters now I'm playing chapter one and I'm just gonna work my way down each chapter as I complete each one now each chapter harnesses its own little storyline each one has like different amount of members like the one I'm playing for chapter one only has one group character in your group that's it the other ones one has two and one has up to four I'm not sure which chapter it is because I haven't played them yet and then we got this one at the end called intermission M a Minecraft adventure I don't know if that Minecraft has anything to do with the online game but uh, no it doesn't as far as the game goes I just don't know if they took that title from it but anyways that's supposed to involve all the characters that you've played in the other chapters all into one game now each game I heard is not really that long like I heard that some people actually completed some of these games in like four or five hours each chapter so uh, let's get started on the actual some of the details of the game so let's back out of here and let's go to continue game I'll go over some of the key features of the game as we could see it's a it's a wide open world map which is cool which I love in a game that's almost a must for me to play any kind of video game I love exploring world maps whether old or new now as far as some of the uh, interface goes here are the UI it's your basic RPG maker type UI with a little more of a professional look to it than a lot of indies offer a lot of people compare this game to the early Dragon Quest or Dragon Warrior series games and you have to agree with them with, with certain looking uh, eye candies when it comes to combat scenes and, and things of that nature so if we go down to the list here actually I'm going to get into that a little bit later but on the top we we have our inventory which is our items herbs all that stuff you also have your magic your equipment and it also has a quest log which is really cool so if you kinda of forgot what you did the last time you played you took a week off from the game you're not really sure where to go next you don't have to write everything down because it kinda of lets you know in here so the ones that are checked off, we could see with the check mark there, is obviously the ones that I've already completed. So I have to go off now to that top one right there. So that's that's the next one I have to do. And then it has, of course, your option system in the game too. Now the game as far as fights goes and gold in the game and, and things of that nature, it doesn't come easy at the very start of the game. Now the fights in the game can be a little uh, hindering and getting the gold in the game too can take some time especially at the very start of the game I'm sure as you once progress in the game then of course they end up giving you more experience points and more gold but right now the fights in the game to me are rather hard like that's not something you're just gonna want a two shot right from the start of this game I find that you have to power level a lot and do a, quite a bit of grind and go up maybe three four levels before you go on to the next area because you're not going to have enough gold either if you don't to buy your potions or whatnot to keep you alive also so here we're just gonna fight this guy and as we could see it looks a lot like the early Dragon Quest games it's got that kind of combat menu to it and look to it let's see here and then we got some magic quite a bit of magic too now the magic is given to you in the game as you progress in the game you don't go and buy it or anything like that it's just given to you as you're going up in the game so we'll hit this guy with that as you could see he's not getting one one or two shot he's still living he's still he's he's getting me pretty low and I've already gone up with my guy got all the top 
weapons and stuff in the area so far that I could buy except for one that's very expensive and I've gone up about at least three or four levels compared to the level I was at when I first got to this area so I ground quite a bit here and we could see that I'm still not one shot in this guy As a matter of fact I think I'm gonna to have to heal Let's see there we go all right there he goes so that's basically what the battle system's all about right there now let's go into the uh, town here and we'll get into some of the stuff out here I mean in here I should say and here is your typical inn and even these now this is probably about the third or fourth town that I came out to in the game and a hundred gold to me is still a lot of money I got like a total of like 4,000 gold, but I got some of it in the bank, which I'll explain when we get into the save system. So if I wanted to stay stay here right now, which I'm not going to because I don't need to right now, I would have to pay 100 gold. The first town you come out to it in the, in the game is free. As long as you stay at that town, it's a good place to grind at the start. You're not going to get a lot of gold or experience points, though. That inn is free to stay at. Now we're going to get into the, well, here's the equipment and the weapons, just like most games like this. All right, I have most of these, but I don't have the one that's 3,500. So I'm up with most of my gears, up with my levels, and the monsters are still not just getting one-shotted, so. Okay, the biggest thing in this game that I want to go over, kind of, well, one of the biggest things is the save system. Now, a lot of games, you could go out in the open world, you could save it anywhere. They have save spots and dungeons sometimes. This game does not. This game only has the save at a church inside the town. Now, the church is a familiar sight to many of us who's play these more old-school type RPG games like Dragon Quest had, uh, uh, Breath of Fire has had them and many games, some Final Fantasies had these, where you stay at a church and this is where it saves your game. I'm just going to leave it for now because I'm still going to use my last save when I actually stop playing. Now, there is a save down here and this you could use anywhere in the game because it's built inside your menu and this is save and quit. So if you use that and you do a quick save and then you go to shut off the game, it's going to take you back to where you last did that quick save. But some things in the game could erase that, so you always want to be sure to back up your main save as much as you can by coming to the church guy. At least that's not going to go anywhere. With those temporary saves, you never know. Certain things in the game can make it where they go away. So you, you have to be careful about that. As far as items in the game, this is a game where they are hidden. Plus they're inside of treasure boxes too, so if, so you definitely want to check, like, like when you come into a house or something like that, you want to check all the bookcases, because you will find gold, you'll find items, anything. You want to check the uh, cupboards, the drawers, whatever you want to call them, whatever side of the world you live on. And I even check the drinking wells, which I have a good habit of doing this from the earlier games when I started becoming a gamer for these games of checking everything I would check out almost every tree I was ridiculous that's why it took me so many hours to to uh, finish my games because I, I checked everything and then it does have a bank and the reason why it has a bank I think the bank is right here and I think this is the pub yeah that's the pub well anyways it's got a bank here somewhere I think it's down here here it is yeah, this is it. The reason why the banks come in handy, like right now he's holding on to 4,000 gold of mine. The reason why the banks in here are so important is because if you get into a fight, this is again where you want to make sure that you always hard save. Because these saves may not work for this. I'm not really sure though yet, but let me explain. If you get into a fight and you die, the game doesn't start you off from the last save spot. You you get to keep everything that you've picked up and collected in that cave or whatnot after, uh, before you died. So, say if I was 
in a cave or something or I was fighting outside and I got two herbs just five minutes before I, I died. I would still have those two herbs in my inventory without losing them. The game does it up to like, two or three times. And then you have to resave it or something like that. But it, it, it will not make it where you're missing all those items that you picked up, which is pretty cool. A lot of games don't have that feature built into it. But what it can do as a penalty for using that is you may lose sometimes up to half of your gold. And the gold in this game does not come easy, especially at the start. So to back that up, Every time you make a thousand or so and you've got some, some extra cash on you, it's good to put it inside this bank. So they can't take it if it's in the bank. So you want to keep that in mind. Okay. Now let's see. Is there anything else here? There's not too much I could go over right now in this, in this game because I haven't done a lot yet. But I just wanted you to know if anybody's looking for an old school Japanese RPG game, this is one to definitely consider getting. And again, it's on Steam. Let me just double check, give myself a moment to actually rethink my thoughts here, see if there's anything else that I'm forgetting. I think that's pretty much it, but let's just recap on the, on the big things. Always try to hard save at a church whenever you can inside of a town. But again, you always have the option of using this if you need to, if you're in a dungeon and you have to go or something like that, you still got the option of using save and quit. Heal all. I'll heal up your whole party with the cost of mana. It's got a built-in quest log, so it kind of keeps you on track if you forget what you got to do next. The main thing you have to do storyline. So it's got that. It's fully controller supported, or you can use a mouse for certain things in the game. And that's about it, guys. That's about all I have to say about the game right now. So far, it's been really good. Like I said, it's just a lot of time when it comes to trying to level up because the monsters are not that simple in the game. But again, I thank you so much for watching Wise Gamer. Always remember to sub up and comment down below. You have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.